Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We're so happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm so glad for the Spirit of God, the presence of God in this house already. I'm excited for what Jesus is doing. Um, exciting things that have happened on Friday night. We went to a Children's Holy Ghost rally in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was awesome, awesome, awesome. And can I tell you that 26 children received the experience of the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. 26 children. Isn't that awesome? Come on, that's, that's awesome. 26 souls. Because I want to remind you that children are not just like half souls or, you know, minor souls, but they are a soul. And 26 souls gave themselves to Jesus, and Jesus filled them with his spirit. Amen. So that's exciting, exciting, exciting. And so we're just excited for what God is doing. And so we're looking forward to what he wants to do. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We want to welcome our guests. Thank you for being here this morning. Praise God. And those of you who are online, God bless you. Thank you for being with us at Bristol Worship Center. Um, I certainly hope that you will feel the presence of God as we do it here. And uh, we pray that you will be able to come and join us physically at some point. Amen. Praise God. A uh, couple of reminders. April challenge, the thank you challenge, is happening this month. Next month is the throne room challenge that's going to be happening. And so we're looking forward to the throne room challenge, the challenge that we're going to be praying every single day, praying and reading the word of God every single day. And so that is going to be the throne room challenge. A little bit of an amendment to the throne room challenge is that uh, we'll be on just on Wednesdays. We have Tuesday service already. We've got Thursday night Bible study. But during May, we're going to be going to someone's home on Wednesdays. So Wednesdays we'll be gathering together and having um, a prayer service in somebody's home. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're looking forward to it. Um, we don't pass the plate here, but if anyone wants to give, the giving box is right there. For those of you who are online and you desire to give, because tithing and offering is biblical, amen? amen. Um, you can pop over to www.bristolworship.org and you find our giving page there and you can give to the Lord. Amen? Anybody ready to worship? Yes. I'm ready to worship Jesus. We're going to give him glory. And honor and just allow him to have his way before we do that. Why don't we stand for a moment and we're just going to worship him. We're going to give him glory. Lord, I'm so grateful for you being in this house. Let's just worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege and the honor of being in your house this morning. I want to tell you that I love you, Jesus. I want to tell you, Lord, that I'm so grateful for who you are. I'm so grateful, Lord, to be in your house this morning. I want to say thank you. You've given me your life this morning, Jesus. I want to thank you, God, for breath in my body, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus, for who you are, Lord God. I praise you and I magnify you because you are good to us, Lord. You're good. Lord, I honor you this morning, Jesus. Lord, I don't want my will done, but God, I want your will to be done. Jesus, you are so good. Lord, I love you and I honor you, Father. Have your way in this place. God, we're your people, we're your sheep, Lord Jesus, of your pastor, oh God. And we're entering into your gates with thanksgiving this morning. And into your courts we praise, Lord. We are thankful to you, Lord. We bless your name. Glory to your mighty name, Jesus. Move in this place, Lord. Have your way in this place, Almighty God. And be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord in song.
Jesus' name. Strongholds will break in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the Lord. Hallelujah. When I hear those words, I'm reminded of the demoniac in the New Testament. And with all the demons he had, even those demons couldn't keep him from being healed. Amen. 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 Those demons could not keep him from receiving the victory in Jesus. That's a wonderful comfort. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Have your way, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord.
thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you in this house, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus.
they come. I worship you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I love you today. Praise God. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Jesus. chapter 16 and we are going to read starting in verse 13 everybody can just stand this is a more of a tradition but if you I like it so if you don't mind just standing for the reading of the word if you're able Amen. Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 if you need a Bible I do not want you to leave home empty handed we have free Bibles for you we want you to go home with the Bible, so if you need one, we have one with your name on it. Amen. Amen. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. How many know that he's more than just a prophet? Amen. 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 But he saith unto them, But whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Lord, we pray right now your blessing. God, as we draw closer to you, help it break every chain in our life. Thank you, Lord. Help it to draw us to you, God. Help it to heal us from the sin that we have done in our life, God. Help it to deliver us, God, from the power of Satan, God. Help it to uh, elevate us to the place that we need to be in you, to be effective for your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Praise God. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? People are still asking that question today. Amen. And a lot of men say a lot of things. It hasn't changed. A lot of men say a lot of things about who Jesus is. Most will say he's a good man. Most religions talk about Jesus as a good man, right? The Muslims will talk about Jesus as a prophet. The Hindus will talk about Jesus as, as someone special, 
right? Yeah. And they knew that Jesus was something special back then. Back in the day, that's why Jesus asked that question, who do, who do men say that I am? Who does everybody say that I am? Yes. This isn't anything new. People talking about who Jesus is and having opinions about who Jesus is. This didn't change anything. In fact, it's been going on since he was born in a manger in Bethlehem. Amen. But I'm glad that the word of God has the final answer. I'm glad that the word of God has the final opinion on who he is. He said in the beginning when he was born in that manger, he said that he is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And why was he God with us? Because he will save his people from their sins. Thank you, Jesus. He's still doing that today. Amen. He is still saving from sin today. He is still delivering today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, I'm going to do something really weird right now. Is everybody okay? We don't have a lot of programs around here, by the way. We just like to worship. Uh, you know, your programs are all good, but it needs to be subject to the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to do something a little different, and I know uh, my wife and I talked about this a while back, but I'm going I'm to spring on her right now. I'm going to ask somebody up here to tell their testimony about what has happened in their life over the last year. Amen. Because God has just been moving in this man, and he hears from the Lord. God has just blessed him. He's, been, he's just been faithful, and I'm just so thankful for his spirit. I'm so thankful for who he is and what God is doing in him. Amen? So I'm just going to add right now in the middle of my sermon. I get it. It's weird. I'm going to ask Brother George to come up here and just tell a, a, just a couple minutes Tell about what God has done in your life over this last year. Amen. 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 Hello, everybody. Amen. My name is Brother George. Good morning, Brother. And I have a testimony Amen. that will make anybody believe that the Lord can work. Amen. You sure can. I was a whole mess. Tell it to us. Back in my day. I was a drinker. Yeah. I smoked crack. Yeah. And I smoked cigarettes. And I got so angry that I ain't no God. Yeah. Until he whispered in my ear and said, you can help me. Amen. Tell it to us. And I cried tears, fasting for two weeks. Amen. Hungry. The devil tried to make me eat. Yeah. But the Lord said, no. He took the cigarettes away from me. He took the drugs away from me. He took the alcohol away from me. Praise God. He cleaned me up so good that he is first in my life. Amen. And every day before I get up, and I've been doing it. For some for about a couple of years now. Reading this word before I even say hello to anybody, before I even talk to anybody. Amen. I'm reading this word. Then I ask them, what do you want me to do? Amen. And then my day starts. That's my testimony. Amen. And God has been so great in my life. Amen. And you still have some obstacles, people will still come your way. Amen. But know what? Mm. When they do, I don't get mad. I just said, Lord. What do you want me to read? Amen. Amen. Tell me what to read. Amen. And then I told the person I still love y'all. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. I hope everybody learn mm. and believe in the Lord. Because he can do it. Yes, he, can. he can do it. I don't want to hear nobody say he can't do it. Yes. I'm a living witness. Amen. He can do it as long as you've got him in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. December, November, maybe, uh, Brother George and Paulinda uh, gave us a call. We want to get back in church. We need to get back in church. And and he told me a little bit about 
but his testimony I said that is real fasting makes a difference Amen. praying to the Lord makes a difference amen, amen. amen. do not do not live under the oppressive yoke of the enemy when you have a God that specializes in deliverance. Amen. 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 Do not live under the oppression of the enemy when you have a God that hears your cries and hears your prayers. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He can do it. Amen. I remember five years ago uh, before we met Brother Paul, Brother uh, George again, um, you know, well, this is kind of a weird sermon, so you just buckle up. It's going to be all right, all right? <laughs> um, I remember meeting them, and, uh, you know, they're just in a bad place, you know. They would come to church as often as we would pick them up, and, and uh, you know, and I, I remember the last time we actually saw Paul Linda, and, she, and they were both just in such a spot where just the devil had ravaged their life. Right, and I hope this is okay, brother George. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, the devil has just ravaged their life, and since that moment, since you know losing contact with them, and they moved, and all kinds of stuff going on, uh, you know, you pray for people when they come in and out of the church, especially when you see people under the yoke of the enemy, and you know, as pastors, we don't want to see people in that state. We want to see them living for God, living an overcoming life, living a, a life unto Jesus that is free from the wages of sin and the things of sin. Amen. 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 And so since that time for probably four or five years, every time, it, it was it would not, it was not once or twice, but it was over and over and over again. Lord, bring them to our mind. We would pray for them. Sister Rochelle be up four in the morning praying for them. For George and Paul Linda, Lord, bring them back to their life. Amen. Help Amen. us to see their deliverance. Amen. 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 And praise God. And so then that phone call came. Well, we're living in Trenton right now, and we want to come back to church. Amen. And like, well, you know, our, our church is here in Bristol. That's in Trenton, so that's a bit of a drive to come pick you up. So, okay, Lord. You're doing this for a reason. You're bringing them back for a reason. And just to see what God is doing in both of their life. And to see the freedom that he is bringing into their life. That he's bringing into their, uh, just in their heart and their minds. And I just want to encourage you. That it can actually happen for you. Amen. It is not his will that any should perish. That's right. That's right. That's the word. It is not his will that your situation should overcome you That's right. and you be destroyed. That's right. It is not his will that you be under and subject to the things of this world. But it is his will that all should come to repentance. And what that word means is that your life has a turning point. Your life has a turnaround time. Your life has a time where you journey towards God. There has to be a time in your life uh, where you say, I'm not going to go the other way. I'm not going to listen to the enemy anymore. I'm not going to follow uh, after this world anymore. Uh, but take this whole world uh, and give me Jesus. Uh, take everything else uh, and give me him. Uh, I'm not going back. I'm not turning around. I'm not giving up. But I will hold on to him to the bitter end. I will hold on to him until I make it. Praise God. Who do men say I am? Men will say a lot of things. Men will say all kinds of stuff about Jesus. He don't know what he's talking about. 
oh, this Jesus way is, is, is not real. Men say all kinds of things. Oh, he's a good man, but live your own way. Right? It's the world. That's what the world says. All roads lead to heaven. That's a worldly philosophy. But I've come to tell you what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You will not find it in some religion. You will not find it in your sin. You will not find it in the escapes of this world. But I must have Jesus at all costs. I must have him regardless of what it costs me. I may have all the riches in this world. But I will give them up for Jesus. I may have everything in this world. But I need him more than I need everything else. I have been married now for 21 years come June. It's been a good marriage. Flown by, been awesome. We're still honeymooning. I love it. Our kids still say ew when they walk by us, giving each other a hug. Come on, mom. Come on, dad. Amen. That's a good marriage. That's right. Praise God. Amen. But you know, my wife would have something to say Amen. if I said, Oh, I love you, baby. But I'm just going to go to the club for a few hours and have some fun right, with some of these other chicks that are out here. Mm -hmm. In fact, just saying that sentence scares me to death. <laughs> <laughs> Because I say about my wife, I say I value my life and my wife. Because <laughs> she is not the timid type person to just put up with anything. You know, make sure that she protects her marriage. Amen. And that is right and good. How much more, as children of God? When it comes to our relationship with God, don't you think that he is jealous for you? Don't you think that he values your relationship more than anything else in this world? Don't you think that he is looking at you as the apple of his eye, as the love of his life, wanting you to come into relationship with him, to get to know him better? time a few years ago when time would just get away from us, man, working 60 hours a week and trying to pass the church and all the other craziness of life. And so we had to be purposeful about time with each other because we were getting lost. Had to be purposeful. Okay, we're going to have some date nights, maybe some fries at Wendy's in the parking lot, but we're going to have an hour to ourselves and just... Get to know each other again. Get to, and just talk. Amen. Amen. I hope that some of you just talk to Jesus. I hope some of you get to know him again. Just take some time to get to know him. Just take some time to learn who he is. Just take some time to get to know who he is. You're going to discover some things. You're going to discover that the God of this world and Jesus are two different things. Amen. The Jesus that this world talks about and the Jesus of the Bible, the real living God, are two different things. Amen. Praise God. In fact, Jesus said it this way. There are going to be lots of people that say, I did lots of stuff in your name. In your name, I cast out devils. In your name, I did all of this stuff. And he said... Depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because they didn't take time to get to know him. Paul was one of the greatest evangelists, one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. But he said, I know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified. 
he said again, that I may know him. In the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You see, a lot of us allow suffering to take us out of fellowship. A little adversity comes our way. A couple of bills get missed. A couple of things happen. Late Saturday night happens. Uh-oh. And all of a sudden, suffering takes us out of fellowship. But we have to know him. In his power and in the fellowship of suffering. Because you will have trouble in this life. Right. Don't believe all the all the hoopla that the prosperity gospel right. talks yeah. about. That's right. just that's just a gospel of this world. That isn't true. Right. Right. You will have adversity. Right. But Jesus said it this way about adversity and trouble. Be encouraged. When you have trouble, be encouraged. For I have overcome the world. When you stick to Jesus, you will overcome. When you stick to Jesus, you will go through what you have been going through. You will get to the other side. Yea, though I walk uh, through the valley uh, of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear no evil, uh, for thou art with me. Uh, Thy rod and thy staff, uh, they comforted me. Uh, Thou preparest a table uh, before me uh, in the presence of my enemies. Uh, My cup is going to run over. Uh, Surely goodness uh, and mercy uh, will follow me. They're going to say all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's nothing new. But you need to recognize the truth when you hear it. It doesn't matter how many lies are out there. If you understand the truth, the lies are wiped away. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm a little bit colorblind, so now you know that about me. But, you know, I can look at that chair and see that it's a chair. I don't care if Sister Jackie says, you know, that's the table, Pastor. That is a table. We're going to start calling it table from now on. That is table. So you can stop calling it. In fact, if you call it a chair anymore, then I'm going to be offended because it's really a table, but I know the truth. The Bible says that there's going to be a time when good is going to be called evil and evil is going to be called good. You better have your foundation sure. You better know who you're trusting in. You better know that a chair is a chair. It's not a table. Because he is Lord of all. He is still God of God. He is still the mighty God in Christ. He is still the one sitting on the throne. Praise God. So I want to ask you this question. That Jesus asked his disciples. Who do you say that he is? Is he just a prophet to you? Is he just another way to you? Is he just another religion to you? You see, the answer to that question will tell me how you live your life. Amen? The answer to that question will tell me how you live your life. You see, Jesus is Lord. So in our home, we prioritize Lord above everything else. He is Lord over my finances. 
Amen. He is Lord over my television set. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He is Lord over my Spotify list. Amen. He is Lord over my YouTube collection. Yes. He is Lord over the books that are in my bookshelf. Yes. He is Lord over what plays over the radio in my car. Yes. He is Lord over every aspect in my life. Yes. He's Lord over what I'm going to say with my mouth. Yes. What am I am going to imagine with my imagination. Yes. He is Lord. It matters how you answer that question. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who do you say that he is? Who do you say how he is and who he is? And your lifestyle will reflect it. Amen? Well, you're judging, Pastor. You're judging. No, well, I'm not judging. The word of God is going to reflect who you are. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I don't know all the situations that are going on in this room. I'm just telling you what the word says. Amen. But God's word will illuminate. James said it's like a mirror that you hold up in front of yourself. And a wise man understands who he is. But the foolish man walks away and forgets who he is. What does that mean? Oh, I'm hanging out with my coworkers, having a good time. And all of a sudden, forget who I am. Amen? Amen. Oh, well, we're just going to go down to this little place. Ah, forget who I am. Oh, we're just going to enjoy this beer. Oh, I forgot who I am. Amen? Amen. Too many people forget who they are. Too many people. In so many levels of life. It, does, it doesn't impact just lay members. It impacts everybody. In fact, it don't impact if you decide to do something for Jesus. The devil is going to help you yeah. to have amnesia. Oh, I decided to get baptized in the name of Jesus. Start following after him. All of a sudden, you got amnesia. I forgot I was supposed to go to church today. I forgot I was supposed to pray today. I wonder how many generations that happened before Jesus was born yes, Lord. that realized who they were. They were sons and daughters of David the king. They had kingship in their blood. And yet when we find Joseph, he wasn't exercising the authority of a king. He was exercising authority of carpenter. Too many of us are walking around doing carpentry work when God wants us to have authority over the enemy. He wants us to live according to his will and to his purpose. And he said, greater things than these shall you do. He wants you to walk into a grocery store and see blinded eyes open. He wants you to walk into a hurting situation and bring healing in the Holy Ghost. But we're doing carpentry work. Did Mary know who she was teaching when she taught Jesus how to read and to write and to grow in the things of God? Don't despise small beginnings and the small things that God does in your life. Didn't Jesus say that it is like a grain of mustard seed? That when you plant it, it grows into one of the largest trees and all the birds of the air come and make a nest in that tree? Don't despise what God is doing in you. If, you. if all you could do was make it here on a Sunday morning, you worked hard all night, and you woke up early and you made it here to Sunday morning, and you just wanted a word from God to feel 
his presence. Don't despise the things that God is doing in you. He's growing something in you. He's doing something in you. And you will not recognize the outcome until it happens. He's making something in you. Come on, we got youth leaders that he's building in this place. We got music ministers that he's building in this place. We've got deacons that he's building in this place. We've got Bible study teachers he's building in this place. But right now it's just a little seedling. Right now it's just a little speck on the tip of a finger. Guard it. Guard it. Who do you say Jesus is? Those little seedlings die so fast. They die really easy. You've got to protect it from the cares of this world that come and try to coach it out. You've got to protect it from the birds of the air that try to come and pluck and eat the seedlings out of the ground. You've got to protect it and make sure the stones are removed so that the roots can grow deep into your life and bear some fruit. Amen. Amen. Don't listen to the word of the enemy. That's right. Listen to what God's word says about you. Listen to what God's word says about you. Mm. Come on, God's word says you can stand for integrity. God's word says you can walk in truth. God's word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So Lord, you don't you don't, you don't know how my week's been. No, you're right. I don't. And I'm sorry if you're going through right now. But neither do you know what my week's been like. None of us are the sum of the smiles that you see in front of you. We look great. Man, we raise our hands. Brother Cook's got a suit on. He looks amazing. A man of God. Doing his best for Jesus. Amen. 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 Keegan looks awesome. First responder. Dealing with all the craziness in this world. Amen. Amen. We don't see it. It's like Instagram or Facebook. You see the smile. From vacation, you see the smile. But you don't see the lost luggage at the airport. You don't see the seafood sickness that they got from eating bad crab legs at the seafood restaurant down the street. Amen? Amen. Come on, God is real, and he really wants to walk you through life. And you cannot walk with him ignoring him you cannot call yourself a friend of God and being a casual acquaintance of him Amen. who do you say that he is I hope that you say the same thing Peter did thou art the Christ what did that mean? That's the one that came to save us. That's what that meant to Peter. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the one that was promised that would save Israel, that would save all of us from their sins. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Who do you say that he is? I hope this answer encourages you to get closer to him. To hear his voice more clearly. To talk to him. And listen for an answer back. I hope that your answer encourages you to stand up in the face of the enemy with the full armor of God on it. And if 
all you can do to stand. Just stand. Yes, we're running a race, but there are some times when it's good enough just to stand. Yes. I'm still here. I'm still faithful. You haven't got me yet, devil. Thank you. You threw joblessness at me. You haven't got me yet. You threw some bills piling up. You haven't got me yet. Amen. You threw sickness at me. You haven't gotten me yet. In fact, I've had to pray a few prayers that Job prayed. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. This is a higher calling. Do not settle for cultural Christianity. When God is calling you to a changing Christianity. To a life-changing Christianity. Do not settle for goosebumps on a Sunday when God wants you to be a witness on a Monday. Don't settle for feeling good in a service when God wants you to have peace of mind every night that you lay down. Mm. Don't settle with bitterness in your heart, jealousy, and pride, and all those things that work themselves against God. When he wants to return peace and joy and love in the Holy Ghost in your life. Amen. Praise God. If you're online, God bless you. Thank you for joining us.